Hey guys, this is Dan at yourpbfriend.com. I have something that I'm really excited about to review today, and that is the newest gun from Bob Long, the new Onslaught. The Bob Long Onslaught is the next generation of the Insight platform. We're gonna talk a little bit about what is so cool about the Onslaught, what's new about it, the previous um, generation, the Insight platform, and some of its flaws and what has been upgraded, how to maintain and tech your Onslaught to keep it up to uh, maximum performance. This one right here is the prototype, the very first one that we've been playing around with for a while. And right here in this box is the very first one that is the final product. So this is the very first final product Onslaught right here. The Onslaught starts at 1,025, so it is a very affordable marker from Bob Long, and it comes with some really cool things now. You get the case, or the box, and now it comes with a nice soft case as well. This is something that a lot of paintballers have been asking for Bob for a while. Can you come with a nice case and tools and things like that? So it does come with this beautiful case. It comes with an Allen key set, a ball Allen key set. It comes with a spare parts kit. There's not a whole bunch of O-rings in here, but it's really all that you need to keep the marker up and running. Not a lot to go through. If you open up this first compartment here, we have a very nice section that holds the barrel kit, nice and padded. Holds a five piece barrel kit, a spot to hold um, either your tools or a barrel sock or something like that. The onslaught comes with a two piece barrel, a very nice back. They have a very nice finish to them. This is a 685 back it comes with. A 14 inch tip with some great porting. It's very quiet and just a, uh, you know, high performance barrel. It leaves you uh, really wanting nothing. You can also order the, um, the extra barrel backs, which would be a 7.9 and a 9.1 as well. So you can have the full kit. That's um, an optional. It's only $30 extra for each back. So that's a really nice option to have the custom colored kit. Let's zip this up. And let's look at the marker. You have a nice soft padded case for the marker. This can sit in your gear bag and stop it from getting dinged and beat up and dirty. And here we go. This is what everybody wants to see. So this is the Bob Long Onslaught. The Onslaught is based off of the old Insight platform. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that Insight really quickly and let you know what it was. In 2013 at Huntington Beach, Bob came out with his first um, dedicated spool valve gun. It is incredible and a couple reasons that made it incredible. Bob, when he released it, he was getting about 17 pods on a 6845 tank. On average, playing with it, we probably get about 14, maybe 15, but that's huge steps over all other spools um, on the market, all the other competitive spools, which are getting you about uh, 10, 11 pods. So quite a few more pods in efficiency. A cool thing about this as well is Bob Long guns have been known to be finicky some people would say which mainly refer to the need to be able to balance an LPR and an HPR and finally tune them with a pressure tester. The Insight platform does not have any LPR on it. It is only your high pressure regulator here. You turn up the pressure to shoot faster, turn down the pressure to shoot slower, that's all you need. Um, he also debuted a system which is really nice. This is a push button uh, part of the bolt. You just push it and it pulls right out. Very simple O-ring, very few, or very simple bolt engine, very few O-rings on this platform. Made it really nice. Another great thing about the Insight platform, besides its efficiency, was how fast and responsive this gun is. It's not that we now get to shoot super high rates of fire, but it's nice to have a gun that when you pull the trigger, the ball shoots almost instantly. When I talk about it, I compare it to driving a sports car versus um, um, driving a luxury car. You know, not that smooth, slow, stop, um, soft ride, but that really quick, snappy ride. When you pull the trigger, it just fires. The Insight was great. It came out, but it had a couple problems. You'll, if you've done any research on the Insight at all, you'll see people talk about the updates. So this is what the updates were. Um, with the Insight, it was having a couple problems where pull this out where air was getting behind 
behind this brass shut off right here and seeping behind it and causing drop off. So the gun will literally start shooting and then drop off very fast. People also equated that to needing lots of lube. All right, that was one problem with it. What Bob Long realized was that there was an O-ring. This is about a year and a half ago, about six months after the release. There's an O-ring that needed to be a little bigger on this shut off, this brass part's called the shut off, that clips into it. Um, so that stopped that O-ring right there. It's a two by 20 O-ring, if you guys need to know the size stops all the drop off very consistent after that point then there were some issues with it chopping paint either one it would clip the second ball in the stack when it shoots call it what we call blowback making the bolt ball kind of pop up um, and the other thing that it would do is it would break the last few balls in a loader Bob Long flashed his boards with a BD setting it's bounce detector what it does is when your spire doesn't have pressure or hopper doesn't have pressure for the last few balls, the ball drops and bounces up. Because the insight shoots so fast, it would clip the ball and make it chop. It slows it down those last few balls and got rid of that. The other problem with the um, bolt kind of clipping the top was it. Um, he turned the dwell from 9 to 12. A 12 dwell slowed the bolt down a little bit and stopped it from skipping and hitting that ball. So that right there was pretty much the solvency of the InSight problems. The InSight now has been a pretty reliable platform. You do see some things where you start having a little bit of breech wear or a little bit of that clipping because the bolt moves so fast. And what happens is the bolt kind of um, teeter totters on that um, O-ring, or sorry, that shut off right there. Another thing people said, the marker was super smooth, or su sorry, super fast. It was uh, super efficient but they complain a little bit about the smoothness. The Insight never had a lot of barrel rise, but you'd feel more of a sharp pop. I really like the feel of that, some people didn't. Um, so with all that said, um, there was released an update you'll hear, or a new part called the Soft Shot Bolt. This is my personal gun. The Soft Shot Bolt was a brass rammer. You see right here, it's a brass rammer, um, colored by the brass color. And it slowed down the insight bolt speed and made it a little softer on paint, a little bit smoother of a shot. There's also been some people who've been playing with some spring mods. I've done it myself right from the beginning. In between the front of this bolt head, or yeah, the back of the bolt head right here and the shut off to kind of absorb some of that shock. Because the insight kick is when the insight snaps backwards. So with all that said right now, let's talk about the onslaught. What's new about the onslaught? We will take it right here. This is my trick to get up, open all the insights. I love it, it's super easy. You push the locking button, you push it out with your finger and you pull it out. This is the new Onslaught engine. This is the difference. It's based off the insight. It doesn't have an LPR, it's just the HPR. And this is the engine. So there's a couple changes which are very significant changes. The kick on the insight was when the bolt moved so fast backwards. Um, so you know it was about a, I think it's a seven millisecond forward movement for the insight and a five millisecond back, so the bolt would come wham. But if you see here, the bolt is now sprung. The spring on the bolt is actually in this back portion. It's a little plunger, and what it does is it absorbs the shock from and the energy from when the insight returns back. That significantly smooths out the marker. You'll see with our shooting videos in a moment how much quieter and smoother it really makes the gun. So the smoothness was added to the already efficient and fast platform on the insight. Now you made smoothness. It's a little, um, it's just a little thing that made such a huge difference and none of that was able to be accomplished with the spring mods or brass rammer. So this is the new brass shutoff. What has been the new O-ring inside, there's now three of them rather than two. What you can see is this stops the air from being able to get by the shutoff, making it more reliable, and it stops it from teeter-tottering at all. What the teeter-tottering did is that's what actually clipped the second ball in the stack and created a little pop-up, made it a little hard on that. So that fixed that. This is going to make the gun much more reliable. There's new air paths with it, which are going to be a little... Uh, a little straighter and more direct. It's able to uh, let the gun operate at a little lower pressure, so a little softer of a shot as well. But this redesigned shutoff is really a, a sweet design that started out, 
but now it's been refined to be more reliable. So to give that to you guys, um, I'll show you really quickly. What you do is you just screw the bolt head in when you put it back together. The shutoff clips right in there. When I lube the gun, all I simply do is you take some lube, you stick it around the back of this ram and around the shaft. You stick it on this uh, bolt head part. And then I go and I stick it on the back cap and just keep those O-rings and then you screw it back together. There's this O-ring right here. This is purely just a spacer O-ring, kind of holds the back two caps together. You can even use it without it. But you know, keep it there and it helps hold them in place. This right here is um, an air assisted. It's got a spring and it's air an airlock. So when the gun's aired up, you cannot press this button and pull it out. So it's a really cool safety feature. I'm gonna show you, and we're gonna take off this back cap really quickly for you. There you go, that's the back of the um, back of the housing, the can housing. There's one small O-ring right here. For that, you wanna have that O-ring, but there's no O-ring for this big area. So you don't need that. This is the plunger. If you can look here, you press it and it returns. There's a four pound spring in there. Um, and that, so when the bolt comes back, it compresses that and it slows down and absorbs the energy, slows down the bolt, and then allows you to be able to shoot again, which is also gonna help get rid of some bolt stick if there's any issue in the colder weather. Um, it's held in with a little seat, um, a little C-clip right there, so you need a special tool. There's really no reason you ever need to get inside that area. It's just this, uh, it's a brass piece um, around there and just a spring in the inside and it compresses. So this is not gonna wear out and it's gonna work really good for you. The back cap is pretty simple. It's got these nice grooves to help pull it out. Like I showed you beforehand, my trick to pull the um, engine out is stick my finger in the breech and press the button and just push it out. When you screw this back in, you see the slots, it's pretty simple. They screw on together. You wanna make sure that you screw this on before you stick it in the gun so that it can seat properly. Um, you want the back cap to remain tight, guys. So make sure that it's tightened down. If you have any problems with it loosening, lo loosening up, go ahead and stick a little bit of blue Loctite on that screw and then tighten it down and just leave it nice and tight like that. Um, so that's the back half of the engine. Very simple. These are static O-rings, don't really need to do much. You can pull this out if there was a little leak in there. There are two O-rings inside here. They, I have worked on hundreds and hundreds of insights. I think that's been once or twice that I've had a leak there. There's two screws, you pull it out. You can also drop a little bit of oil down in there. It'll seep in and that'll help uh, um, seal it up for you. Really simple. Um, I also want to mention that these new rammers are a quarter of an inch longer than the older rammers. The brass rammer will not work in here from the insight and the original insight rammer will not work. But the bolt head will is interchangeable to the old soft um, pillow bolt type bolt heads. Um, just like with an insight, don't be alarmed if you get some bolt tip wear or some breech wear. That is the gun breaking in. That means there was some friction right there. The friction is taking care of itself. A gun with the breech wear is going to shoot smoother than one that hasn't been shot yet and needs to wear down that part. So don't be alarmed. That's uh, really simple. But that's the onslaught back um, and engine breakdown. Very, very simple. Not much to do. The regulators are very simple with Bob Long. Um, my hands are gooey. It's the same style as Reg. This actually does split in half right here, so you need to have dry hands, and you just take that apart. I say lube your regulator about once every 20 to 40 cases. That's what Bob says as well. You don't really need to do much to them. They just keep going. That's really simple. So there's nothing in here as well. There's just this O-ring on top. I've never really had a leak on any Insight or gun coming from that area of the regulator, so that's pretty simple. We're gonna take off the eye covers. The eyes are the standard um, Bob Long eyes. It's available in 2C and 4C. Um, the 4C eyes, especially when shooting semi, they allow you to be able to uh, shoot a little faster because it reads it when the ball first passes the first set of eyes. It tells the gun it's ready to shoot. Um, here's the detent. You see right here, you got the spring, you got a detent. 
Just the eye system and the eye harness clips right into the eye board. Very simple, you can unscrew it with one screw, pull it out, clean it, put it back together. You're good to go. With the new onslaught, the onslaught actually, the eyes are milled just a little bit lower than the Insight was. The Insight, some of them had problems reading very small paint. It wouldn't detect it. But with the new onslaught, it's been milled just a little bit lower to read all paint, no matter the size. So um, any 68 caliber paint will work great in this and it should be able to read it just fine. So that's another good upgrade that's been done to it. Um, the board is very simple. Bob Long's board, he's been using these OLEDs for a while. You hold down the trigger to get in programming and you turn it on. Once you're in there, you scroll through the modes by pulling the trigger. Then what you do is you press this button to select that mode to edit and then you scroll through the trigger to change it as well. Um, stock on this, the stock dwell on the onslaught as well as the insights is 12. Keep it at that, you won't have problems. Mechanical dwell doesn't really matter on the onslaught. You can put it up to five, which is its max. It really doesn't do anything. Um, the debounce, or mechanical, sorry, debounce, not dwell. The debounce mode is five through 50. The debounce is to stop it when you're gun shooting because the onslaught's kick is straight back. You can get some runaway. If you take out the spring and stick the um, trigger very close to the micro switch, you'll get runaway. That was a huge problem with the insight. I'm glad to tell you that because the onslaught is significantly smoother, this prototype one over here that I've been using, first thing I did was take out the spring. I had the travel about three quarters of the way through of the trigger pull through before it activated and it wasn't running away on me. I stuck my debounce at about 2530 and I was shooting PSP 12.5, um, 15 semi, no problems, no runaway. So it's much smoother so you're not going to have as much problems with that. Um, if you do like that hairline um, trigger bounce or hairline activation, you can get a Delrin trigger, which is even lighter. Pull out that spring and you're good to go. Delrin trigger is so light, it just solved all the problems. But the onslaught did fix the insights problem of having all that trigger run away. You can still get it to run away, but it's pretty easy to get it to stop. So if you really have a problem with it, I have a video how to tune your insight trigger. It does apply for this, but not to the same extreme. You can check that out on YouTube as well. Um, we're gonna put the engine back in real quick. I'm going to open up the grip, fr um, the grip frame and show you the board. And then we are going to drop the frame for you really quickly and show you how simple it is on the inside. All right, we got the grips off. Battery comes out, very simple. Here's the board held in with three screws. This is your eye harness. It's very simple, goes up through the bottom. You just pull it out nice and gently. They all come soldered for the length right here. Don't pull them out and pull on this part right here. You can unlodge them. If you do that, um, you can send it to us. We'll resolder it for you or if you know how to solder. Um, so it's not the end of the world. These noids really don't go bad often. I've seen very few of them go bad, so that's a really good thing. But to take the frame off, you uh, unscrew these or unhook all these uh, parts. And then we drop the frame. I like to do it evenly. Um, if you do the back one too far first, it'll actually um, start making it harder to undo the first because it um, the back one is inside the frame while the front one's out screws be careful guys right here um, you don't want to pull out any wires so make sure you tuck them in properly and there you go this is the onslaught internals this is the manifold don't ever take it out never seen one leak underneath now I've seen one leak out of probably a couple hundred it's almost never that problem I have other troubleshooting videos for the insight if you think it's the manifold, probably contact somebody who knows the inside and onslaught very well before you take it out. Once you do remove the manifold, there's just a few O-rings under it, but you have to lock tight this screw um, back in, otherwise it will leak. So you want to make sure that that manifold is nice and secure. The eyes, the eye harness, as you see, goes underneath here. I've seen people take it apart, forget to put that in, or take it in and pinch it. There's a very simple groove for it to go through the eye harness. Um, make sure you do that right. Other than that, as you can see, 
There's nothing else to the gun. That's it. There's like nothing inside of it. The simplicity of the onslaught is what makes this a fantastic marker for everybody. Um, the solenoid right here, as you see, it was hand tightened. That's not a problem. It's very simple. I recommend you don't pull apart this solenoid all the time unless you're having some issues with it leaking through this back cap. There's four O-rings on the outside here. They're special custom O-rings that you have to get at or from Bob Long. We also carry them at your PB friend quite often. Um, if those break or leak, they can create some of those leaks um, on the gun. But again, don't, don't do that. Don't put any Dow 55 on this. Yes, it will seal it, but next time you take it apart, it will break the O-ring and you don't wanna do that. So some Dow 33 on it, please. Some monkey poo works great. Um, Bob's Secret Sauce, stuff like that. Just a little bit to keep it sealed. Um, put it back in gent gently and it just screws in. And like I said, I do it hand tight. Um, there is a spot for a wrench if it is tighter than that but there's no re reason to really make it much tighter than that. So there you go, that's the guts of the gun. They're very cheap parts to replace if they do break. You're not talking about $180 for a solenoid like other manufacturers. You're talking about 60 to $90 for parts. So that's really affordable, another big plus from Bob Long. Um, and remember, made in America, that's really cool. Okay, so we're gonna look at the bottom part of the frame real quickly. Very simple, same frames he's been using because um, the ergonomics and everything works well. This O-ring right here, I believe it's a one by 3.5 O-ring. Um, that can get blown or used. These guns prefer a lower pressure. I have seen people use high pressure on them, an 800 PSI output tank and not have any problems, but you can have problems blowing the ASA O-ring right here um, and this one. So I recommend guys to use a 500 PSI. That's what I use, a mid pressure. So any Ninja adjustable tank with the shims removed or a super low pressure you can use as well. I just like the um, the mid pressure because it works on all guns very well and it's just an awesome thing. So that O-ring, just keep it a little greased. You're good to go. Trigger is really simple. I'll show you that real quickly. Very smooth roller um, bearing trigger. Same as the G6Rs and the Victory lines in the Insight. So the Delrin aftermarket triggers and everything work well. These are very simple. Hits on this micro switch. The spring clips in to this. Let me set this down. The spring clips into this spot right here. So you can just get it to clip right back in. And that holds it. And where it sits when it goes in is it actually sits against this manifold and sits right in that area. See, it bounced out. But it sits right in that area. I'm not going to put the spring back in because I like it without it. I'm going to use this gun after this review some more. Um, but the Insight springs used to be the same spring as the G6R in Victories, this one, but they used to stretch it to make it stronger. This one doesn't need to be stretched. It works very good, just like this. I, in fact, clip mine to use about half of it so you can do whatever you want. Um, trigger has uh, two adjustments here it has your stop for your trigger pull. And then it also has your activation. There's other um, holes um, drilled into it. People ask why, well that's just to make the trigger lighter. It works really well. Um, put this back in, oh sorry. Put it back in. Screw it right into place. Tighten it down. You don't need to over tighten it, but you can tighten it all the way. It's running on a trigger. Um, a bearing in the frame and then on the trigger works really good so no uh, slop there it's really simple um, to get to your ASA all you do is you take apart these two um, o-rings and there's or sorry these two screws and there's o-ring right in there keep this tight if you take it off for any reason put some Loctite back on it some blue lock thread Loctite holds it in place tighten it down it's not gonna go anywhere you'll be good Remember when putting the frame back together, we want to make sure not to rip the wires. So I hold it like this. I usually take the solenoid O-ring or a solenoid wire first, push it in. Then I stick my uh, other wire in, pull it through the back O-ring, the frame O-ring. It has a flat head and it sits inside the frame. It's shorter than the other one 
had some people say, wait, I can't get it through the frame. That's because it sits inside the frame. Um, so I usually put that one on first. I take it and I will uh, hold it down. And you can go ahead and tighten this down a little bit. Tighten this actually pretty much all the way. So I tell it just till it stops. And you put in this front one with the round button head. Now I tighten it and then I go back and don't tighten it with the ball allen key. That's not to break and to tighten things. It's just to spin it and make it useful. Use the other part of it and then go ahead and tighten it all the way. You don't need to over tighten it, this guys. It shouldn't take massive amount of leverage. Just hand tight, you know, put a little bit of a strength into it. Just tighten it till it's good. You're good to go. You can plug these back in to the board. This is the eye wire. I like to push it in by hand and take this and I don't push on the wires but I push on the side of the white part just to kind of hold it in spot. It shows on the back of your board your plus and your minus. So the plus goes towards the front of the gun. You put your grips back on. I'm going to screw it back together and we're going to talk about just basic troubleshooting and how to keep your onslaught up and running in peak performance. Number one thing, make sure the battery is fresh. A paintball battery, a high quality battery starts at 9.7 volts. Once it gets under an 8.7, your battery is toast. You will get efficiency issues, drop off, your solenoid won't fire, bolt stick, eyes not working properly and chopping. The board has a battery indicator. There's four bars. Almost all paintball guns have it. By the time you're missing one bar, you're toast. You're probably at 8.5 and it can cause a lot of problems. Sure, you can get your gun to be able to fire if you're lucky and sometimes it'll work great and you won't notice it, but it won't work as good and it's the problem of probably 90% of the guns that come into the shop. Number two, I really recommend using a high quality lube like Monkey Poo. Um, Monkey Poo has made a huge difference in the insights as my team has shot it and all my customers, especially for those of you in the cold. Monkey Poo is a Dow 33 based lube mixed with a high quality oil. What it does is it actually sticks onto the bolt better. Rather than Dow 33, you cake it on and you really have to cake it. And people say, well, it just runs through lube. That's because Dow 33 doesn't actually cling to the bolt system. The Insights S bolt system that's very simple but moves very fast. And so the lube, like the Dow 33, will come off very quickly. Monkey Poo, you stick on there, just a light coat, um, you stick it on, and it actually clings on very well. I personally have shot an Insight in a tournament in one day, over six cases, without any type of drop off or problems. With that said, relube your marker every time you play. Um, if I would have thought about it, I didn't have a problems, but if I would have thought about it, I would have relubed halfway through the day at about two and a half cases um, in the tournament just because that's smart to do. You know, basic maintenance, keep it up and going. Um, dwell. Dwell is the third issue that I'm going to talk about. There's people who say stick your dwell at 10.5. You can drop your dwell on the insights and the onslaughts. It's not really going to benefit you anything. If you're talking about efficiency wise, you may gain a few balls, a few balls, not a few pods, a few balls, and you're not gonna notice much kick. That's not how the Bob Long markers work. That comes directly through Bob and my conversations um, directly about it. He says that the uh, there's no reason to drop your dwell. Stick your dwell at 12. That is a big issue we have. People start having bolt stick. People start having consistency issues or drop up. Stick your dwell at 12. I ran my inside at 14 to 16 dwell. No issues, incredible efficiency, work great. So don't be afraid to pop it up a little bit if you need to. You might find it to be smoother and nicer. Um, other than that, there's not a lot to go wrong with the Insight. Um, you need to keep those things done properly, or sorry, the Onslaught, the Insight platform. You need to keep those things done up um, well. Lube, battery, dwell needs to be set. Um, if you're getting some leaks, we have some troubleshooting videos on the Insight. They would pertain to this. You'd have a leaking um, area right here. It goes with your manifold and your solenoid. So go ahead and watch our videos. 
how to um, or insight troubleshooting and tech tips that does carry over onto the onslaught. It's on YouTube. There's a lot of views and uh, should be easy to find. Um, keep your feet necks tight. Um, you can even stick a little bit of a uh, blue Loctite right there. That'll help keep them on in the bottom screw only. So that works really good. All right, we got two pounds, or two pounds, 1.3 ounce with the barrel. For the onslaught, the insight, one pounds, 15.4 ounces. So I believe that's one ounce, um, 1.3 ounces, if I'm not mistaken. Just a little bit heavier on the onslaught. That weight is in the midsection and it allows it to be able to uh, smooth out the gun even more. So still one of the lighter guns in paintball. Very light, feels really good in the hands. A very nice marker. With me talking about it, I do wanna make it clear guys, I am biased and the bias isn't because of Bob Long or who makes the gun or even that it's made in America, how cool it is. I'm biased because I own a paintball store I got to shoot any gun I wanted um, and I grabbed the insight and I just fell in love with it. I was a back player. I got to shoot a lot of paint, have the very smooth flat shot. Um, I didn't have any barrel lot rise. Um, so when you're reloading, very little barrel rise, it kicks straight back. So you could hold the tank in your shoulder and just keep that lanes on it. Very easy to lube and use. Um, it is my favorite gun, everybody who knows me. Um, and all you guys who follow me, you know the Insight is my go-to marker. That is because I love it. This is going to take the shelf for the new Onslaught. The new Onslaught is better. Um, I don't want to push you guys into, this review is not made to push any of you guys into buying the marker. Everybody has different preferences, but what, can, what I can sell is I've sold more Insights than any other gun in paintball. It's because I love it and I show people it and I say you shoot it and you let me know what you think and people fall in love. Um, so far that's the reaction we've gotten with everybody who shot the Onslaught. They've just, wow, that is really quiet, that's really smooth, that's reliable, it's fast, it's snappy, it's efficient, it just blows their mind. So the new Bob Long Onslaught, it's 1,025 guys. Um, it comes in any color you want, dust or polished, any combination. We have a gallery on our website. You can also get splashes, as you see, fades, acid washes um, for an extra charge, pretty much anything you want there. So be sure to check it out, yourpbfriend.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the best videos and the very up-to-date um, markers. Remember, we are the ones getting it first. We're the very first ones with the Bob Long Onslaught. You see on our website, the very first ones with the Alien Deception. One of the first people with the E-Tech 5. If you want to see what comes out first in these whole in-depth reviews, subscribe to us. And let us know what you think. We want to do the reviews that you guys want to watch. And we want to, you know, give you the information you need. So Bob Long Onslaught, thanks for checking it out. Go shop at yourpbfriend.com. Thanks, guys.